Hello, this is getting started with SharePoint Framework Tutorial 2, Hello World Talking to SharePoint. And this has a dependency on the, on the Tutorial 1, so we continue from the step uh, steps which we completed in the Tutorial 1 by com uh, further enhancing our existing web part. So let's actually jump on our code. So I'm going to flip to my Windows 10 machine hosted in Microsoft Azure. Uh, first of all, uh, if you don't have the Visual Studio code running, let's actually get that one running in the solution uh, folder where we already created the web part in the tutorial uh, one. And essentially, this is the, the status where we are in the tutorial after tutorial uh, one. Now, uh, let's actually uh, flip back in here um, in the console and uh, we want to do call observe uh, so we are able to see the web part being rendered properly in our uh, in our local uh, workbench so let's actually get started on by using the context so trying to figure out uh, where we actually are being hosted and then using the urls dynamically within the code so I'm going to flip back on my Visual Studio, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Visual Studio code to be precise, uh, but Visual Studio it is as well. Um, and I'm going to slightly adjust the code uh, with a certain small settings. So what we actually want to do uh, is that we want to get out uh, the actual um, uh, location where from where we are actually rendering the, the information. So let me actually switch this one uh, to slightly different uh, location. So let's do this context and uh, page context, web and the title. So I can actually get the title of the particular web or site where the, the web part is being hosted. So now if I go back on my local workbench and if, so if we flip in here, uh, our situation has been, or the web part has been re-bundled. Uh, so we can actually see the information saying that it's a local workbench. So, um, so we can actually get the title uh, of the site. And because this is a local workbench, it's that the web part isn't actually hosted technically in a SharePoint site. So it's hosted in a local workbench and that's the title then of the site. If I now, however, flip to the SharePoint site uh, and let's actually get rid of the web part, old version of the web part in here. Let's do a quick refresh. So we're able to see the updated web part in our uh, first release tenant at this point. And whenever the, the page is actually refreshing, uh, we're able to get the web part uh, back on the page. And in this case, we're seeing that it's the title of the site where the web part is being hosted is SPFX. Um, it's really important to notice that this is super, super useful uh, for you because in the code, uh, the context and the page content actually has a lot of properties. So from the web perspective, we're able to get the uh, local URLs, uh, permissions and, and so on. Or we're able to figure out the additional settings or in the page content, uh, we're able to get access on the lists and users and, and all, all of that information. So there's a lot of uh, already existing context information available for you to consume. And also objects and classes and properties which you can take advantage within your code. So let's actually uh, modify or leave that one in the, in the site. And let's actually start modifying the code in a way that it's it's actually talking to SharePoint itself. So first of all, uh, let's add two different uh, additional interfaces um, in our uh, client side of web part solution. So I'm going to put these above uh, the web part class. There we go. Uh, so we have the SP, SP lists. So that's a collection of lists. And that's a definition of a one single list uh, in the site. Now, if you want to do client, uh, local development, uh, obviously in a local workbench, you don't have access on a SharePoint data. So it would be kind of useful to mock your data as well. So in this tutorial, we're showing how that can be done. So let me actually extend uh, or add a new file in this folder, which will be called mock HTTP client TS. And using the tutorial notes, I'm actually copying the needed code uh, for this particular web part. So let's actually have a look on what I'll be adding there. So let me slightly zoom the, the code so you can more easily see what's actually being visible in, in, the, in the code. 
So uh, we have here, uh, we are importing the, the ISP list, which we just added in here. So that's the ISP lists interface. So we're importing that from that particular file. And then we export or expose from this file uh, mock HTTP client, and we're returning essentially uh, three lists or imaginary lists, mock list, mock list two, mock list three, with an ID one, two, three. And the whole point of this one obviously is that we're kind of uh, mimicking the situation that we would have live data coming from SharePoint, even though we are running the stuff in a local workbench. So let's actually start using this uh, mock in our code. So let's actually modify uh, our web part slightly and let's actually add that one. Uh, the definition of importing that mock HTTP client just uh, below uh, the I hello, hello world web part props uh, definition. And then let's actually add uh, the access of calling this uh, mock data inside of our web part. So I'm going to put that one inside of the web part just above the render method. And what we're doing here is that we're calling the mock HTTP client. We're giving the, the page content web absolute URL as a property there. And then uh, we're getting the list of uh, list of lists, uh, which is uh, being returned by the mock HTTP client. Now, in the real world, when we're hosting stuff uh, in the SharePoint context, and that's really the purpose of this web part, is to get an access on the list of uh, lists in the SharePoint. So let's actually get that one implemented here as well. So what we want to do is that we want to use the SPHTTP client to get access on the SharePoint data. And let's actually add a method, which is essentially exactly the same as the mock list data but only to get the information uh, from SharePoint. So using the context SP HTTP client, uh, the web absolute URL, we're using the REST uh, API. So underscore API web lists, and then we are uh, getting all of those lists which are not hidden. And we're using the HTTP client configuration v1 as an option. And that's a versioning uh, model, by the way. Let me slightly modify the, the page. There we go. So now uh, we have the mock list data for local workbench. And this will be then the one which will be used when we are actually hosting the client side web part in a SharePoint site. Just to render the stuff nicely out uh, to, to the UI, let's actually modify slightly our styling. So let's add a few style definitions uh, to our SCSS file underneath the button definition. So I'm going to add these two definitions here. So we have a list uh, styling and we have a list item styling as well. And then uh, this really relates on the on the fact that if we go to the, the web part itself, if I scroll down, you're able to see that in here we are actually referencing styling row column title. Those were there generated there by default when we uh, scaffold our solution. So if I go to the definition, it actually we are able to see that those styles are coming from the module CSS file. So from the from this file. So this one actually had the, the definition and styling for the default rendering of the web part. Good. Let's go back on the on the web part itself. Uh, and in the web part itself, uh, let's actually import some additional uh, components or classes to be able to use. And I'm going to add this underneath uh, this one. So let's add a, a semicolon there and let's add a semicolon there as well. And the environment and environment type will be useful because they will give us the information. Am I being hosted uh, on a SharePoint site or am I being hosted in a local workbench? So let's actually have a look on that one as well. So let's add that logic to render our, our call either one of these methods depending on where we are actually being hosted. So let's add that method uh, here as well. So render list async, I will first check if I'm actually in the local workbench. If I'm in a local workbench, we're going to use the get mock list data method, which we created uh, a while back. And then we're going to render the list. Uh, this is a method which we just haven't yet implemented. If we are in SharePoint and 
uh, or we are in a classic SharePoint and essentially the modern SharePoint sites or the classic SharePoint site, then we're going to use the get less data, which is the one which is calling the right REST API, uh, which is giving us the, the information about the lists in a SharePoint site. Good, so let's actually add that uh, render list method here as well. So I'm gonna copy that one from the tutorial code and let's have a look on that method. So what are we actually doing with the method as well? So in the render list, uh, we're getting a collection or array of lists and then we're doing an for each and then we're rendering a UL uh, tag for the list information and the title of the list. And essentially now we have the basic setup uh, available. Now, the render list is done. Uh, we have the basic setup of are we using mockup data or are we using live data, but we're not yet rendering anything. So let's actually add that rendering there as well. So in our render method, if we scroll down, let's add additional div in this method. So let me actually do this. Oop, and let's actually get that one on that side as well. So here we go. So there's our SP list container. And let's go back actually just to make sure that we, we do this properly. Well, let's add also the, the call to render list async. Uh, so essentially to render that list information from the web part. So let's go to render list async. So please note SP list container is the ID of the div. And if we go to this definition, uh, we're able to see that the render list method is actually rendering that information to that list SP list container ID. So we're generating the HTML here using the for each, and then we're putting that uh, generated information inside of the div, which we're being selected in here, HTML inner HTML being that HTML. And there we go, we're rendering the uh, information out. Now, because we did have uh, the console up and running. So essentially, if we have a look on here, uh, we can see that the console was all the time up and running. That means, and we don't have any exceptions uh, in this UI, it means that we're ready to go essentially to test the functionality out. So let me flip first uh, to the local workbench. So let's have a look on that one. And we can actually see the rendering immediately available. So the mock list one, two, three are, is available because we're in a local workbench. And then in the SharePoint online site, if we go to the SharePoint online site uh, and let's get rid of the web part and let's add that uh, refresh and add that web part back on the page or workbench, we can actually see the uh, listing of uh, of the all of the lists uh, which are available within that particular site. So we're rendering that properly uh, inside of the site. Um, we could slightly adjust obviously uh, the settings. So if we have a look on our rendering, so let me do this. Uh, we're surrendering that information. I could actually slightly rework uh, the rendering to be like this. So we can actually see uh, the list container inside of the, the main div as well. So let me come in here. Let's refresh the page. We can actually say that the rendering is, is done not that optimal. So let's actually switch back that one in the right way like it was. And let's save. Let's flip here. It's going to refresh because we saved the changes. The console is going to recognize that one. And voila, we're again rendering the UI properly with the mock lists and data uh, properly in the UI. But that's it essentially. Uh, so what happens here, uh, like you can see, uh, if we can move back on the code, uh, in the code itself, we have the logic of recognizing if we are in a local workbench, then let's use the mock list data. So we're mocking out the data so we can actually see the rendering logic, uh, even though we are not in the context of SharePoint. If we are in a context of SharePoint, uh, let's actually use the list data using the REST API, which is available uh, for us to consume. So calling the REST API in here, we're using the base contact web absolute URL to get that particular site uh, URL, and then hitting the REST API endpoint and getting that information out. So 
really nice uh, way of, of kind of doing able to, to being able to do the UI level of implementation, uh, even though you would not be connected on SharePoint. And then when you are in a SharePoint, then getting the actual data outside of the SharePoint as well. But that's it for this tutorial. So let's move into next tutorial where we can actually put this web part and host it uh, in a SharePoint page. But let's do that in a separate video. Thank you.